Hello everyone, this is Monica Lupion. Welcome back. So today I'm going to start with the second block of this course. I'm going to begin with the fundamentals of mass transfer. If you remember from the introduction, I mentioned that in this course we're going to study heat transfer and mass transfer. First, the first block is going to be was about um, heat transfer and the second block is about mass transfer. But we're going to follow the same structure in both cases. So if you remember from uh, heat transfer, we began by discussing the fundamentals of heat transfer and then we continue uh, analyzing conduction, convection and finally the application, the industrial application of heat transfer. In this case, we're going to follow the same structure as I mentioned. Today, I'm going to go over the fundamentals of mass transfer, and then we will continue with molecular diffusion, which is somehow similar uh, or is an, an analogy with uh, conduction in heat transfer. And then we'll continue with convective mass transfer, which, as, as you might guess, is similar or it has a lot of in common with convective heat transfer. And finally, the industrial application of mass transfer, we're going to see a membrane separation systems. Um, I'm going to also go over a few specific examples of equipment for mass transfer. Um, if you remember as well from the introduction, I mentioned that it's very common in industry and particularly in, in, in chemical plants to have different equipments. And actually, in many of those equipments, we can see heat transfer and mass transfer happening at the same time. This is an example. Um, uh, this is uh, the flow diagram for ethyl uh, alcohol production. And you can see, for example, the fermenting tank. tank. There are mass transfer happening, but also heat transfer because there is a variation of the temperature. Um, you see as well in the CO2 unit uh, to capture the CO2, same thing. So it, it's not very uncommon, it's very common actually to have both mechanisms, both, both processes happening at the same time. But you can, uh, in most cases, you can try to solve heat transfer in one side and the mass transfer in another. So this is the overview of the second block related to mass transfer. We're going to see today the introduction. And then the next lecture will be about molecular diffusion. And we're going to cover today the fixed law for molecular diffusion. We will continue in the next video to talking about the diffusion coefficient. We're going to see that we can find or we can determine the diffusion coefficient for gases, liquids, uh, pores, and solids. And then we're going to move uh, to the differential equations governing mass transfer, uh, specific, specifically applied to steady state diffusion. And then we will move over the unsteady state diffusion, that is when there is dependence with time. Finally, we're going to see some other equations related to convective mass transfer coefficient. As I mentioned, we're going to follow the same structure as for the heat transfer block. And the last item will be to study the industrial application of mass transfer. Uh, the content of my presentation today, we're going to begin just by giving a brief introduction about mass transfer. We're going to see some examples. And then we're going to uh, go more specific into molecular mass transfer. And um, very important, we're going to study the fixed law for molecular diffusion. Then we will continue with the diffusion coefficient. And I'm going to give you just a very brief overview about the diffusion coefficient, because we're going to study this in more detail in lecture number one in the next lecture, in the next video. And as well, a few words about the convective mass transfer. Um, we're going to study this in more detail in the lecture number 13. And finally, a summary. So let's begin with the examples. Um, we already discussed this, that, well, we can find many different examples in our daily life uh, where we can see heat transfer on mass transfer. And some examples of heat transfer, we studied this already, um, the radiation of the sun to the earth and to the moon. And when it comes to mass transfer, well, uh, if you think about, for example, a biological process, and kidney and hemodialysis, and, and I'll show you a few pictures in a, in a minute. Or if, uh, for example, some biomedical applications, how the um, drug which is contained in a, in a patch is delivered through the skin to our body, 
But as I mentioned a few minutes ago, it's also very common to find both processes happening at the same time. When you're cooking, for example, we, we see a variation in the temperature. So there is heat transfer happening, but at the same time, let's imagine that you're using some salt on some species, that there is mass transfer. So some of the volatiles from the uh, species, for example, they transfer it to the piece of meat uh, that you're cooking. So this is um, just the two examples, the typical examples of mass transfer that I just mentioned applied to a uh, biomedical process. And the, um, well, if for some reason there is an issue with your kidney, we use um, hemodialysis and there is an equipment that we take blood here that has some uh, impurities and we purify that. Uh, those impurities in our equipment and there is a mass transfer happening and we're going to see this in more detail in the future lectures and finally the blood has been purified gets back to the body. For the delivery of a drug in, in a patch, well when we put the patch in contact with the skin there is mass transfer going from the dark reservoir through our skin and finally to our bloodstream in our body. So those are just two simple examples of mass transfer. And there are some others, as we're gonna see in this course, one main application of mass transfer is uh, separation by membranes. And this is uh, like a very hot topic nowadays. We can use membranes to separate many different, many different things. For example, for the purification of water, or for capturing CO2 or separating CO2 from uh, a stream of a gases stream. So many different applications of membranes. And as I mentioned, this is a very hot topic nowadays. So we're gonna see, uh, we're gonna do an analysis over the different parameters that we need to know and how we can design this type of equipment. Well, uh, here in this table, I like this very much because you can see the similarities between the momentum transfer, heat transfer, and mass transfer. And of course, every mechanism is different, but you can see here the similarities between the three. If you remember the simplified equation for heat transfer is this one. So the heat rate is a function of the driving force. In this case, is the temperature. and we're gonna see uh, in this, uh, when, we're, when, when we study the equations for mass transfer, that the equation, the general equation can be very, very similar. In, in the case of mass transfer, we can define the ratio as a function of the driving force, that in this case is a concentration. And there is a parameter here, which is a diffusion coefficient, the same way as in the study of the heat, we define the thermal diffusivity. Same with the momentum, and I'm not gonna get into details, but I'm pretty sure that you remember at least the general equation for momentum transfer. And that would be for a steady state, but if we focus on non steady state, that is when there is dependence uh, with time, we see uh, this time here, the similarities is still happening. This is for heat. Again, the temperature is the driving force. And in the case of mass, uh, transfer is a concentration, but the equations can be expressed in a very similar way. Same in the case of the momentum. Okay, so let's focus now on mass transfer. Let's see uh, how can we uh, solve the problems with the transfer? What are the main parameters affecting uh, mass transfer and in particular molecular mass transfer? So there are two modes of mass transfer. First one, and it's, let's say the easiest one, is the molecular diffusion. Um, you have, uh, we have some chapters dedicated on molecular diffusion in your textbook. So from chapters 24 to 27, it's all about molecular diffusion. And this is similar following our structure in heat transfer and mass transfer. This could be similar in the sense of, well, there is an analogy between molecular diffusion and heat transfer conduction. The second mode of mass transfer is convective. And in this case, the similarities are clear between convective mass transfer and heat transfer convection. 
and the chapters in your textbook are the 28 and 29. Okay? Okay, so let's begin by focusing on the molecular mass. So we can use a device to study the molecular diffusion and it's called Arnold diffusion cell. So basically what we have is just like a beaker, for example, and at the bottom of the beaker, there is 100% um, volatile liquid. And if we just leave the beaker on a table, for example, we, we will see, uh, well, actually we won't see, but we, we can measure that there is some evaporation of the volatile liquid into the air. So here in this diagram, the black, that will be uh, the moles of the molecular of volatile liquid evaporating from the bottom of the beaker. And at the same time, uh, we well, th there is an air that is getting into the beaker, and it's also some flowing air outside the beaker. So let's focus on the definitions of, of what's going on here in this diffusion cell. Well, the molecules of the element A, this volatile liquid, in the gas and those evaporate, diffuse through the air. And they call, they're being called source. On the other hand, the sink will be the flowing air. So the concentration of A, the liquid in the air can be considered zero. While the concentration at the bottom of the beaker is pure volatile liquid, so this is 100%. So as you can see here, there is a variation of the concentration, and actually that's the driving force of the mass transfer. Um, the main difference between mass transfer and heat transfer when it comes to diffusion is that, well, in heat transfer, we, when, when we notice a delta T uh, variation in the temperature, the only parameter affecting that, or the only parameter affecting uh, heat rate is the variation of the temperature. In the case of mass transfer, we, of course, the driving force is the variation of the concentration of A, of the element A, of the liquid, but the presence of the rest of the components also affect the mass transfer. And we're gonna see this when we formulate the equation. So that's the main difference between mass transfer and heat transfer when it comes to diffusion like this. And of course, that complicates a little bit the equations and, and the analysis. But nevertheless, you will see that if we follow uh, the steps and, and we go over in detail, it shouldn't be that complicated. But still, it's a little bit more challenging than heat transfer because we also have to consider the presence of, in this case, in this example, the element B. So it seems clear that the relationship between the, there is a relationship between the mass flux and the concentration gradient. The higher the concentration gradient, the higher the, the mass flux or the molar flux. Similarly, uh, when we study heat transfer, the higher the delta T, the higher will be the heat flux. Um, but just uh, as I mentioned, the main difference is that in the case of molecular diffusion, it's a little bit more complex than analogous molecular transfer of momentum and energy because we have to consider the presence of other elements in the mixture. So since concentration seems to be a very important parameter when it comes to mass transfer, let's take a closer look and let's see how we can define concentration as a function of different parameters that we can find. Um, and here in this table, you can find two different cases. One is when we have gas and when we have liquid. In this case, we are expressing everything in molar units, but we can also express the concentration in mass units, so molar unit or mass units. So if we have a, a gas, for example, we can apply the ideal gas equation. We can assume that there are 
ideal gas conditions and therefore we can relate the concentration as a function of the pressure, the constant for ideal gases and the temperature. Okay, for a particular element, for the concentration of the element A, the definition will be the same, but instead of using total pressure, we'll be using partial pressure. Okay, when we have a gas, we can also define the molar fraction as a function of the partial pressure of the element A over the total pressure in the system. Same for the element B, the element C, the element D. And the sum of the molar, the fra the molar fractions has to be equal to one. Okay, that this is not something new, right? Yeah, this is something that we learn already. What happens if we have liquids? Well, if we have liquids, we can't apply the ideal gases equation, right? Uh, we don't need to actually, but we, we can apply the equation that relates the concentration with the volume. If we want to have the, the units expressed in, in molar units, then we will have to use the number of molars, uh, the number of moles, sorry. If we want to express uh, or to have mass units, we will use here the mass of the system. What will be the concentration of an element? Well, the concentration of an element in molar units will be the number of moles of the element A divided by the total volume of the system. If we want to express the concentration as a function of the mass, then the density, uh, which is in this case the concentration expressed in mass units, is a function of the mass of the element A divided by the total volume of the system. We can also define molar fractions in the case of liquids. And in this case, the molar fraction is defined as the rate between the concentration of the element A over the total concentration in the system. And here as well, as it happened in the gas, in gases, the sum of all the molar fractions in the mixture has to be equal to one. Well, we can also uh, do analysis over, over how fast the elements move from, from a mixture. And in this case, we can study, uh, depending whether we want to have mass unit or molar unit, we can study the mass average velocity for a multi-component mixture or the molar average velocity for a multi-component mixture. Again, this is uh, in mass units, this is in molar units. So we can define the mass average velocity using the density expression. So the density over the different uh, elements divided by the density of the system. And similarly, we can also use the same um, definition, but in molar units, if we want to study the velocity of the, of the multi-component mixture. The diffusion velocity is then defined um, depending if it's uh, in, in mass units or in molar units as the difference between the diffusion velocity in mass units minus the mass average velocity for the multi-component mixture or we can use the same definition but expressed in molar units. And again, it's the same, is the diffusion velocity in molar unit minus the molar average velocity for the mixture. Um, the same way we can also define the molar flux or the mass flux, depending whether if we want to use molar units or mass units and we can define the molar flux of an element A in the mixture as the moles of the element A that is being transferred divided by the cross-sectional area and time. And this is usually the unit that we normally use for molar flux of the element A in a mixture. We'll talk more about the, this expression, but this is the fixed law of diffusion and it's quite important for molecular diffusion. Next, you can see here a very brief description of the uh, fixed equation. Um, the name is from the uh, scientists who developed this theory, Adolf Fick, 
which lived in the 19th century. And where we will be talking about this quite a lot. Um, I will try to simplify the equation because, well, as you can see here in the slide, there is a lot of differential equation. But since the main goal of this course is not to develop your mathematical skills, we will try always to simplify when it comes to differential equation. The same way as we did in heat transfer, we will try to do the same in mass transfer. So depending on the unit, you will find different expressions for the fixed law. If we use the um, weight fraction, we have to use the density. If we use the molar fraction, we normally use the concentration and the uh, molar fraction. If we, or the, directly, we can use the molar concentration and use the concentration of the element A as the main parameter. But in all the cases, you see that the diffusion coefficient, DAD, it's very important, it's very relevant. And actually, in the next lecture, we're going to discuss a lot about different ways to determine the value of the diffusion coefficient. But it's clear, as we define in the heat transfer, that the rate of mass transfer is always the driving force divided by the resistance. Here, the same. We have the driving force, which is, in this case, the differential um, or the, the difference between two different points uh, uh, expressed as a concentration or expressed as a molar fraction divided by the resistance. Okay, so when the fixed, fixed law of diffusion was trying to be verified using experimentation, the scientists find out that the initial experimental invest investigation was an, uh, it was not possible to verify the fixed law of diffusion. If we consider only these two terms, um, which is the total mass transported or the, the monoflux flux equal to the mass transported by diffusion, which is what we discussed a moment ago, it didn't match. So we had to, or they had to actually, introduce a new term, which is the bulk flow, which is how the elements which are present in the mixture also affect the mass transfer. So uh, let me go over again. So in this previous slide, when we discuss the fixed law of diffusion, you see that the molar flux depending only on the element A, right? And what I'm telling you now is that we have to add a new term, which is the bulk flow, which consider as well the presence of other elements in the mixture. So this is the main difference between the heat transfer and mass transfer. In heat transfer, we only have to consider delta T um, applied to two different points. In the mass transfer problem, we also have to consider the presence of other elements. And we consider that through the incorporation of this bulk flow, OK? OK, so if we consider that, if we consider this second term, how can we express the fixed rate of equation, or the fixed rate equation? Well, uh, we have the same element here. So the uh, molar flux is equal to the term related to diffusion plus the second term, which is related to the bulk flow. And you can see here that there is a presence of the element B. And if there are more than two elements, then we also have to consider here B, C, D, E, whatever elements they are, OK? So this is the fixed rate, uh, fixed rate equation. The molar flux is equal to the molar flux related to the diffusion, which is directly proportional to the concentration gradient plus the bulk motion contribution, which considers the presence of other elements in the mixture. OK? So um, yes, we can express this fixed law of diffusion in different coordinates. Let's imagine, just for simplification purposes, that there is no bulk motion. So the second term, well, we, we have 
cancel the second term, so this is plus zero, okay, there is only one term. Um, how can we express the fixed law of diffusion in other coordinates than Cartesian? Well, very easy, as you can see here. This is the case of a cylinder, cylindrical coordinate and a spherical coordinate. Okay, and we're going to use these expressions in, in, the, in the problems, you'll see. Okay, I hope that the fixed law of molecular diffusion is more or less clear. Let's now say a few words about the diffusion coefficient. Although, as I mentioned, we're going to pay a lot of attention to the diffusion coefficient in the next video, in, in lecture number nine. So in, you can see here in the fixed rate equation that no matter, even if we, let's say, cancel the bulk uh, motion term, we still have the diffusion coefficient. So we're going to see in, in the next uh, lecture different ways to calculate this diffusion coefficient when we have gases, liquids, solids, and specific uh, case of uh, pores, when we have a very tiny, uh, when we have a material with certain porosity. But just to give you an indication about the sense of scale, uh, the numbers that we're talking about, when we study diffusion coefficient in general, in gases, diffusivity is higher, so it's easier uh, that the mass transfer happened. So in gases, it's, it's higher than in liquids, and in liquids, it's higher than in solids. And you have here, just for your reference, the normal typical range of the values of the diffusion coefficient. And you can see it's clear here that in gases, it's uh, larger than in the case of liquids and the case of solids. We're going to see, uh, we're going to use the information in the appendix, J, okay, J1, J2, and J3, to directly get the values of the diffusion coefficient. Although, as, we're gonna, as I'm going to explain in the next lecture, sometimes it's not possible to find the value of the diffusion coefficient that we want, and we will have to find another way to determine the values of the diffusion coefficient, and I'll go over the different equations that we can use. Normally, what we're going to have is some semi-empirical equations for the calculation of the diffusion coefficient. But don't worry about it. I will explain this in more detail in the next lecture. OK, so now a few words about convective mass transfer. We're going to see this in more detail in the lecture 13. OK, um, but let me go over very quickly. So um, when we study the molecular flux, um, the molar flux of the element A, if we consider convective mass transfer, we have to define a parameter similar to heat convection. In the case of heat convection, if you remember, we use the parameter H, which is the convective heat transfer coefficient. In the case of mass transfer, we're going to use the parameter k c is, is a, if it's expressed as a function of the concentration like in this case you see is the driving force is expressed uh, as a function of the concentration so the uh, coefficient the mass transfer coefficient in this case is kc and c denotes concentration so the the parameter k or the parameter the convective mass transfer coefficient is also quite challenging to determine, the same as the convective heat transfer coefficient. Um, so we'll see how we can calculate those. It's a function of the system geometry, the fluid property, and flow velocity. And we're going to be using some empirical equations to calculate the value of these uh, convective mass transfer coefficient. OK? So in summary, uh, we uh, talk about the two modes of mass transfer. One is molecular diffusion. The second one is convective. And we have defined fixed rate equation for molecular diffusion and this other expression when we have mass transfer, a convective mass transfer. Of course, in reality, these two modes of transfer can happen at the same time. Here in this course, for simplification, we're going to assume that when it happens, molecular diffusion, we're going to apply fixed rate of equation, fixed rate equation. And we're not going to take into consideration 
ma convective mass transfer. And in the same way, when we have a convective mass transfer, we're not going to consider any molecular diffusion. So we will try to separate these two modes of mass transfer. And finally, we also highlighted the importance of the diffusion coefficient for the molecular diffusion. And we're going to see in the next lecture the case of gases, liquids, uh, pores, and solids. Okay, and this is all. Uh, if you have any questions, please send me an email. Thank you.